The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. And they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat along with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. have with me a little poem today. One night I had a wondrous dream. One set of footprints were seen. The footprints of my precious Lord, but mine were not along the shore. But then some stranger prints appeared, and I asked the Lord, what have we here? Those prints are too large and round and neat, but Lord, they are too big for feet. My child, he said in somber tones, for miles I carried you alone. I challenged you to walk in faith, but you refused and made me wait. You disobeyed, you would not grow, the walk of faith you would not know. So I got tired, I got fed up, and there I dropped you on your butt. Because in life there comes a time when one must fight and one must climb, when one must rise and take a stand or leave their butt prints in the sand. (laughs) Hmm. It's time to stop waiting. It's time in our life for action. I think about the gospel and it's all about action. Actually, all three readings are about action. And we see that the message is urgent. It's about now, not later. In the first reading, Jonah goes out and proclaims to the city of Nineveh, 40 days more and Nineveh will be no more. And then in the second reading, uh, in the second reading, Paul says, uh, the time is running out. Time is running out. Stop getting caught up with the world and start getting caught up with God. And then in the gospel, Jesus says, the time for the time, I always forget this. The time of fulfillment is here. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The time of fulfillment is here. Now is the time. It is urgent that we do something in our life. And we see in all the readings that the response is immediate. The, Jonah only goes one day into a three-day city, and the entire city of Nineveh repents and puts on sackcloth. Hmm. Or we don't hear in the second reading, but the, the, the uh, letter to Corinth, uh, what we don't hear is that the early church in Corinth blooms, blossoms. And then in the gospel, it is immediate, immediately that Andrew and Simon 
and John and James begin to follow Jesus. Every day, every day that we wait is one more day that our heart grows more numb and bitter. Every day that we wait. That is the nature of the beast. As we wait and wait. The time is now. Why do we resist? Why is it that we resist? We're cons- we, we believe that the spiritual life is full of pain and suffering. And we are convinced that living a life of selfishness and instant gratification will bring us joy. It is the exact opposite. Our selfishness and need for instant gratification brings us suffering and pain. Our living a spiritual life brings us joy. The word gospel means good news. And Jesus tells us, repent and believe in the gospel. Believe in the good news, that it is good news. Believe it. Trust that in our life. Stop trusting other things that leave us to em- lead us to emptiness. Start trusting the goodness of God, the good news of God. Be able to let go of that bad news that is all around us constantly. Trust in the good news of God. I was uh, just thinking of how urgent this message is. I was uh, reading the story about this guy, and he was so caught up in his selfishness and in his own instant gratification that he was talking about how he missed, he missed, he missed really experiencing his relationship with his children. He regretted that in his life, but he was also rejoicing because, because he had now in his life, now in his life discovered a new way of life with the help of friends in a 12-step group. He had discovered that and was able to develop now, his relationship with his children on a deeper level. We get so focused on other things. We do that with our children, right? We get them caught up in a whole bunch of other things. All these sports, all this competition. Where is our witness to them of the importance of what really matters, the spiritual life? It's all about competition. Well, you know, in competition, there's always a loser. Always. And even if you win, guess what? There's always going to be somebody better. What are we teaching our children? In a spiritual life, in coming, living in a spiritual, living in communion with one another, Let's teach them a new concept. It's called win-win. That is the truth. What is God urging you today? I know that God is urging you to do something in your life. That is the spirit working in us alive. God is urging us right now. Not later. Hmm. Maybe he's urging us right now in our life to go on a chirp retreat. The men's chirp and the women's chirp are coming up in this February. And maybe God is urging you to go on a chirp. Maybe God is urging you to join an organization, a committee in the parish, 
to finally do something in your life to connect to a deeper sense of community. What a great witness to our children and our youth. Maybe God is urging you to join the youth ministry in the parish. Maybe God is calling us to simplify our lives and let go of those extraneous things in our life that we get so focused on that there is room and time to be with God. Maybe it's being involved on a larger scale in a larger community. Maybe the food pantry or Habitat for Humanity. Now, I know I listed a whole bunch of things there. I'm not here to overwhelm you. Just one of those things. Let God take you by the hand and pull you up out of the sand. <laughs>